So I'm on the board of RBS and have been since January 2010, so I'm a non-executive director. I first of all chaired the Remuneration Committee, but now I chair Sustainable Banking Committee. And our focus really is holding management to account for everything they do around customer, people, culture, environmental, social and ethical issues. And so really helping to build a sustainable bank. Sustainable banking really is about everything we should do to run the bank sustainably for the long term. Uh, I think it's very easy to see that RBS, obviously having been rescued by the taxpayer, needs to learn all those lessons and deliver for the long term for a whole range of stakeholders, whether that be shareholders, employees, or the wider communities that we serve. So if I think, I think if you start from the top with Ross and his mission to build a bank that's number one for service, advocacy, and trust, then we link into all of those things, but perhaps most importantly, the trust agenda. How can our customers and employees trust this bank for the long term? The sorts of initiatives that we're involved with is all the things to do with determined to lead and the cultural change going on in the bank. All the things to do with customers, things like preparation for open banking, closed loop feedback, um, making sure that our onboarding journey is a good one for customers, and really working to see if we can learn from all the complaints we get and build a better bank, a more sustainable bank. But then we also look at really some long-term, more core sustainability issues. Actually, this is a bank that has done super work on reducing its environmental footprint. We're the largest leader in sustainable energy lending. We've got many things to be proud of. And so this is a bank that we want all stakeholders to be able to trust. I was lucky enough early in the year to visit Silicon Valley with my colleagues in the Sustainable Banking Committee. And we went along and met with Apple. I was blown away by their sustainability commitment. Starting from the top about a real commitment to leave the planet a better place. And it just runs through everything they do, all the way through manufacturing, even in China, all sustainable energy, um, a really impressive uh, visit. Uh, one of the things I loved was um, they built a robot that can unpick any iPhone and put it back into its component parts so they can be re reused in the manufacturing process of new phones. Look, that's just fabulous. We also need to find a way of making just sustainability a way of thinking and a way of life in banking. So I think there are some leadership examples already. Um, Money Sense has been going for 22 years and we've taught 4.5 million kids more about financial capability and learning how to use money. The work we do with social enterprise to support enterprise that have got a social mission. So yes, they want to make money in order to put it back into social purpose, whether that be helping vulnerable customers or homeless and so on. But there are some other areas that I think we really need to turn our attention to that are some of the longer term matters important for the bank. So you take housing. Um, we've got a very large mortgage book and we make very good returns from that mortgage book. But we know that the generation millennials don't expect necessarily to own a house. They think they're going to be generation rent. The same with cars. You know, I've got two boys myself, age 20 and 22. They're in the generation rent and they don't expect to be owning things the way that I expected to be owning things. Now that really does pose some new questions to the bank about how can we support the next generation to create that economic change that we're going through. So I think the future that we're trying to create and clearly we can't declare victory yet is a bank that can be trusted by many stakeholders, whether that be our customers or employees or obviously wider communities for doing the right thing for the long term. You know, our values really do speak to the kind of bank that we want to be. But there are some risks. Uh, the environment itself is changing around us and we need to adapt to that, whether that be technology and open banking is clearly one of the real innovations that brings both risk and opportunity for us. But this afternoon we've got an engagement session and we're talking about uh, the impact of climate risk and climate change. And I think if you look longer term and you think about some of the government and regulatory changes that we're going to be under, about getting to a zero carbon economy, that's going to bring all sorts of challenges for our customer base and for us. And how we take part in that's going to be important. So technology is at the core of the bank. I mean, we are the ultimate digital platform business. And I suppose banks have really thought of themselves that way, but increasingly we need to. And that's exciting for technology uh, teams. Um, clearly the advent of open banking is the most visible sign, but there's lots of signs. You know, our mobile banking app is used so much more often now than 
for our customers than going through the branch. Really, the way we all consume banking services has already changed, but will continue to change ex you know, extensively. One of the areas that I suppose I'm really interested in is financial capability. How can we use technology to really help on a mass basis, but personalised basis, people understand their own financial health and what they can do about it, how to take good personal decisions. If you go back to the financial crisis, it was individuals and governments taking um, rather bullish decisions about their own financial circumstances that led us to too much debt and obviously the financial crisis that we know. How do we make sure that we build a generation that understands money a little bit better? And the use of technology there must be the solution. Technology and learning. How do we teach customers, communities, use money in a better way? Um, we've done Money Sense, that was very much the uh, idea of its age. How do you now use technology to really accelerate the way people understand money on a personalised basis? Look, my kids use Monza. Uh, you know, that annoys me, of course it does, but it also informs me. So, what are we going to do? How are we going to be better? for customers in really being bringing innovation in a manner that, that's easy to use and intuitive for the next generation. And of course, you're perfectly positioned to help us understand how to do that. So as a bank, you know, we are in the center of an ecosystem. We know everybody that's in a town or in a, in a location or in a, a sector, an industry sector. So we can help bring communities together and inform them of what other people are doing, how they're learning, and really engage that ecosystem. We can be that ecosystem if we actually use technology to connect our ideas and communities together. So we're all traveling into this open banking, open data world. Um, data security, personal ID, that's something we need to help our customers with. You know, in, a, in an age when the next generation won't need to have a driving license, you know, can we be that ID passport? Can we be the place that people trust to use their personal ID as their, their bank account? Um, helping people to think through pricing. You know, lots of people just, customers will say, I don't know how I pay for banking services. We ought to be able to make that transparent. That's part of doing the right thing and using data to really demonstrate that we're a fair bank doing fair banking. So I think what we're going to see is um, a lot of um, measurement and transparency as we uh, adjust to changing climate risk. And so with technology, what we need to understand is uh, how quick are these changes taking place? How can we help our customers really understand that pace of change? Where are the priorities? And how can they use technology to really understand how quickly they can manage and change their business profile to address the kind of risks we're taking. We know um, flooding, we've, we've had the, the hottest uh, Junes on record, we've just had three in the last three years. We know we've had, we've now, I think the, the, the Met Office have just put out an announcement that uh, the chance of having extraordinary floods has gone up to one in three years. So one year in three we're going to have a lot of customers uh, in trouble through flooding. Um, actually understanding and being a part of the solution, not part of the kind of remediation, and actually being able to predict some of these things and help customers through their, their, their bad days is a key part of really helping on the environment. I'm very excited. Uh, the audience is just perfect because obviously it's the next generation, it's very diverse, it's got all the skills we need. It's not yet tainted with all of the past history of um, RBS. Uh, it's absolutely passionate audience and so I'm very excited. Uh, think the impossible and take us uh, dangerously close to the edge of what's possible. That would be wonderful.